guys, welcome back to Empower In. It's Caroline Porter Thomas, and today we're gonna learn a few things on the IV pump. The first thing that we're going to do is we figure out what's ordered. So let's say we have a basic infusion, and what's ordered is normal saline, and the doctor orders normal saline at 100 milliliters per hour. That's for a patient that is admitted with dehydration. So we have our bag of normal saline here. Usually comes like all wrapped up, but this one's open because it's just for demonstration purposes. And it has a little closure here that we just pop off. After we wash our hands, we open the container and then we pull the top off. And then we get our IV tubing. The IV tubing usually comes packaged like this. This is what it looks like when it's opened. You have the end here with the empty chamber because we haven't put fluid in it. And then if we go down here, we have this part that hooks into this particular pump. And let me just um, let you guys know, we are using an Alaris pump. Um, every pump is a little bit different, but they all have the same concept. And then you have a little clamp down here that you can roll up to open, and then you can close it by going down like that. And then you have the tip here that you connect to your patient. First thing that you want to do is you want to take the spike here and take the fluid and make sure you have it pointing up because if you point it down, you're going to have fluid leak. This tip right here needs to remain sterile before priming. Then you want to make sure the tubing is locked and then you can hang it up just like this. Then you want to prime this chamber and all you have to do is squeeze it then you go ahead and push this up here. So to prime the tubing, what we're going to do is we just have to open the clamp. See how the fluid's going? I don't know if you can see those bubbles. But all the fluid is getting primed. And make sure that there are no bubbles at all. And then once you have that, lock it. And we're going to insert it into the pump. So we have our pump right here. So we're going to turn the pump on. The first screen that we're going to see is always going to ask us if this is a new patient, which we're going to say yes. Then it's going to ask us which area we are working in. Is this med surge or women's? So just so you can see all of the options, let's just say no. And then you have these options, critical care, med surge women's, neonate, pediatric, or specialty. So for our purposes, let's just say med surge. And then the next question is going to ask for our patient ID. And this is usually like a nine digit number. We're just gonna say, our ID is pretty easy today, all ones. And then right here, we select our channels. Right here, you can see that this says channel A, and over here it says channel B. So we're just gonna go to channel A and press on. And then it gives us three options, which are guardrails drugs, guardrails IV fluids, or basic infusion. Now the drugs, if you click on the drugs, it'll give you all of the options of the drugs that can be given. And keep in mind, we're on a med surge floor. So it'll give us all of the options on a med surge floor. So if we go to IV fluids, it'll give us all of the options that we can deliver on the med surge floor. We also have an option for basic infusion. This really should only be used if you have to bolus fluid in. If you had an emergency going on and you need to bolus some fluid in, then you would in as you needed and you would just press start. And now you see that we are giving a basic infusion and we're bolusing some fluid in. If you look at the tubing up here, it's going very fast. You see the drops? So here we are. We're going to do just a basic uh, normal saline infusion. So our doctor ordered just a regular fluid to treat dehydration. So we're going to go to Guardwell's Fluids. We're going to choose IV fluid. Now we have different options. If the doctor ordered a different solution for infusion, but um, we're just going to go to regular basic IV infusion. We're going to select select. And the doctor ordered, let's say, 100 milliliters per hour. And then we look at our bag and we see 1,000 milliliters. So we're going to go here and we're going to put 950 milliliters. And we put 950 because we don't want this tubing to run dry because once the fluid 
runs dry, then you have to reprime it. And then you press start. When you have the screen light here, it means it's infusing. Pretty soon you should see some drips going. So once we have this all set up, we are ready to connect it to the patient. We're just going to pretend that this is my patient right here. And what we do is we take alcohol, we, club, we clean it very good, and then we also um, flush, make sure the IV is working properly. And then we connect the tubing to the patient. Once you have your fluid infusing, then you want to date and time. So you put the date that you put the, um, started the infusion and the hour, and you also can put your initials. And then you just take this and you stick it right here. And that way we know when we need to change it. In most healthcare facilities, it's 72 hours. So just check with your facility and see when it needs to be changed and make sure that we keep these tubings nice and clean or changed every three days. Also, with the bags of fluid, we also put a patient label on them in most facilities and we also write the, um, the time and date as well that the bag was hung. And this bag should only be up for 24 hours. After 24 hours, it needs to be changed. And we also put whether we put added any drugs to it, which usually nurses do not add any drugs to it. So we usually just put no drugs added. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And let me know if you want to see more videos like this or whatever kind of video you want to see in the future. Alright, I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye!